Hi, welcome to 16-Bit Bench, Matt here. Um, today we are going to install, finally, uh, a McWill screen into a Game Gear. Um, <clears throat> so I've been waiting for a customer to purchase one of these, and someone has. I have my own one, which I did, but I did that about two years ago and I didn't film it. So this is a good one to get onto, uh, onto video. So in order to do a McQuill um, screen replacement, what you're going to need is the McQuill screen. And I purchased this one from a company whose name escapes me right now, but I will put it in the description. But uh, if you're in Germany, if you're in the States, there, there are local vendors to you. There are um, people that buy these in bulk. Um, so this is the McQuill screen. It's, it's you know, quite a tidy package. Um, runs about, it's close to a hundred, hundred of your local currency unit, whatever that may be. It's usually a hundred of those. Um, if you buy them in bulk, obviously they're cheaper, but it, you know, I haven't got the money to do that. Um, so yeah, all it is, is an LCD with a driver board and on the driver board are some, uh, chips with, uh, like some kind of microcontroller on there to sort of, to take the signals from the Game Gear board and replicate them and, and convert them so the screen will show them. Um, so we've got one of those. Uh, tools you'll need, you'll need a game bit, 4.5 mil, that is for this screw here. Then you'll just need a regular old screwdriver for all the other screws. Um, soldering iron, which I've plugged in. It's, yep, it's in. Uh, so, first thing we need to do is verify that this game gear works in order to do that we have our trusty test cartridge you know this this game sucks there's probably people like i like batman returns well i don't it's crap and i you know why i don't like it because it's the only game i have to hand for the game gear and the master system so customer was kind enough to supply his power supply with the game gear which makes it a lot easier um, I've had game gears that failed to work with the power supply, but work with batteries, which is which is strange, and the other way around as well, which makes more sense because the battery terminals usually get uh, corroded. Okay, so let's turn this guy on. Oh, oh that doesn't like that. Anyway, so what it's doing is it's powering on and then immediately turning off. And that is usually because the power board is not supplying the right voltages. And what we're going to do first is we're going to recap this Game Gear. So I already have a Game Gear recapping video. Uh, this will just be going over it again. I'll probably fast forward through most of it. Mm -hmm. So good news is no one's been in here before. No one's tried to recap it. Um, no one's messed around with it, which is great. Always get worried when I see that. I mean, that sh shielding shouldn't be bent up. Hmm, some kind of brown material. I sneak snuck in there. Okay, put that shield to one side. Uh, what should we do first? This looks pretty crusty. All the sound caps have, have gone. But I think what we'll do first is the main board. Now, you don't need to actually uh, remove it from, from the shell if you're careful. Obviously you're putting heat in here and this is all plastic so you might melt something if, you, if you're a bit cat handed uh, So what we do with our game gears is we use surface mount capac capacitors because it's easier. Uh, it's counterintuitive. So it seems uh, you'd think that um, using a smaller component would be harder but actually it's much easier to use surface mount components in the game gear than it is to use a um, radial axial capacitor, the big fat round ones. Um, so it's super easy to do. What have we got? Got 10, got 10. Let's find our bag of 10s. What you do, and again, this is in my video, pliers are really useful for recapping stuff. The caps are glued to the board, so we kind of just gently pinch them and then we'll lift those cans up. I also forgot to add, um, I will do, I will use electrolytics on the soundboard and the reason I do that is the soundboard, um, it just, 
I've had problems with surface mounts and I think electrolytics sound better. They're better for audio responses. So what we do is we tend to use electrolytics for in audio circuits. So yeah, I've not been doing a lot of videos recently. I've just not felt like it. Um, you know, sometimes you just don't feel like doing stuff. Uh, the business is, uh, you know, it's not making millions, so it's a bit stressful. So these are our surface mount caps. You see they're nice and tiny. What you'll need is a pair of tweezers. We'll just pull them back. And we need three, one, two, three. Then put them back in your packet. You'll have a hard time getting them to sit perfectly flat. Um, just because one side, the solder will set on one side before it sits on the other. Okay, there we go. So that's the first three done. Um, like I said, there is already a video of this. I will link it uh, on a card now, and I linked it before as well. Um, you, you don't need. What I'll do is I'll just fast forward through the rest of this process. We don't need to go on about it, and that means I can uh, I can turn the radio back on. So yeah, uh, fast forward, go. <laughs> Okay, so that's the most of the recap done. We can test it now, see if we've resolved that uh, intermittent power problem. I'm gonna sneeze. No, I'm not. Oh, what was? So we just plug the power side back in. Uh, get the best game in the world ever, but around turns, plug that in. Uh, game gear power supply, plug that in. Turn it on. Yeah, now the power's on. Yeah, there we go. That was our problem. That would be the, I'm going to guess the 68. Um, yeah, you can't see it at all, can you? You just see like a white. Can you see that moving spotlight? Yeah, so I'm going to guess that was the 68 microfarad in there. That was causing the uh, intermittent power, which is great. Now we've uh, we resolved that problem. Um, we just need to recap the soundboard and then we will uh, move on to installing the McWill screens. Okay, so the next part of this is the soundboard. You could do the soundboard in situ, you don't have to remove it, but I am going to, just cause uh, for clearance's sake. To do the soundboard well, is there's a knack to it. Um, it's very easy just to, just to uh, chuck the capacitors in but then the problem is that um, this uh, shield sits directly over the soundboard in this position so if the capacitors are too high then this bit uh, is in the way 
and there are some guys that just tell you, oh, well, just cut that bit off. But like, well, if you do it nice and neat, you don't need to cut that bit off. So I can see by just a visual inspection of this board that it has problems. Uh, now with these uh, sort of service mount SMD cans, they're a bugger to remove without a solder rework station and a heating mount and all that stuff, which I don't have. So the trick that I have is to rock them off. Now it does carry some risk, especially if the board's destroyed. Now I have a I have a, a box full of Game Gear soundboards that I, I got uh, second hand anyway, so I'm not too worried about killing this soundboard. And I don't think I will anyway, because I am uh, I'm good at it. But uh, yeah, the trick is to uh, rock uh, in the opposite direction of the way the legs go. So see this this one here, the legs are going uh, east to west. So we want to rock it north to south. So you just get a pair of pliers, uh, grab it gently but firmly, and we just go north, south, north, south. And you can feel the capacitor just want to give and it, as it rocks up on its legs and it comes off. Now, um, when I've done recap videos in the past, if you've seen those, then I doubt you have because next time no, one, no one's watched them. Uh, I do say uh, don't remove all of the capacitors, but with the soundboard, I find it is actually uh, is actually best to remove all the capacitors, and it's quite easy. There's only five. The big ones are all 100, and the two small ones are 47. So, um, and you can see by the markings on the board which what goes where and what polarity they are. It's all marks on the board. So, the soundboard is one of those few exceptions where I would say, you know. Maybe take a picture of it if you're not if you're a bit um, unsure. Take a picture of it first before you remove anything. Uh, but yeah, just get all the capacitors off it. I've never pulled up a trace on a soundboard doing it this way. I'm sure you could if you were really hand-fisted. Um, but the, the knack is really to let the capacitor tell you when it's ready to come off the board. Um, is not to force it. So it's a gentle rocking motion, and you can feel on each sort of rock that you've come up off the legs a little bit and then you can see that the capacitor has cleared the board and you can kind of see the legs have popped out of it too. There we go. One left. Ding. All done. So our next step is to get your soldering iron is this to remove, uh, remove the legs that remain on the board. So yeah, you might need to add a little bit of solder just to get these legs off because of this, they're so crusty. All we need, now need to do is clean this board up because it's disgusting. So this is a fiberglass pen. Um, yeah, don't, don't do this because it's sharp. And engineer's friend. So as I said before, um, I use um, I use electrolytic capacitors for the soundboard. Um, the reason being, when I have done a couple of them with um, surface mount uh, ceramics, and the audio response just isn't as good. It just it's a bit noisy, and the top end kind of distorts. So I mean, it's not like it's a high fidelity thing, but still, um, I found it's best to use electrolytics. So the trick to to it is watch what I'm doing and copy it. So I get the I get the cap and I bend the legs. I give it a little feet, do, 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 do. like so. So you've got that. You see that guy standing up like that. And then what you do is you push him down, and he sits like that. See how neat that is. And that's it. You just repeat that process. Nice little, little neat soundboard. There you are, nice and loud, nice and clear.
the last bit of our recapping odyssey before we get down to the actual business of this video is I'm going to do the power board. To get the power board out, two screws and then this, this, little, this bit of black plastic that's usually stuck down and it is but the glue's kind of failed. Uh, then take off the power button and save it because it's very easy for it to disappear if you're not paying attention. There's an 820 and 22 and a big fat 100. So what we need to do is desolder uh, the caps uh, and counterintuitively the best way to desolder something is to add loads more solder. Uh, then I put the soldering iron on it and count to 10 or so. And this is a good solder sucker. Um, this is the um, Engineer SSO2. Um, it has a little silicon, replaceable silicon tip, which is a lifesaver. Because most of the solder suckers I've had have failed because the tip is gold manky and you can't replace it. So this is the hot air gun station that I have. It's the um, 858D. That's a sort of generic name for a lot of for a style of hot air gun really more than a specific brand yeah so i usually run it up of around 450 uh, and then what you want to do is grip your component firmly but gently there you go it's the 820 so the problem now comes that we need to clear these holes so we can get our um legs back in. You want to get in there quick while the board's still warm. You might get lucky. There we go. Uh, they are, the negative leg is marked on the board. So we just push in. So yeah, if you don't have a hot air reworks, a hot air gun, you're going to have trouble. And there we go. So that's the power board recapped. Okay, so I'm just going to snap these legs off and then I'm going to let the board cool down because it's still a bit on the toasty side. I also need to let the camera cool down because it is a DSLR and it does get hot and it is telling me it's too hot. So I'm going to pop to the loo and uh, we'll come back and hopefully get on with the screen replacement. Okay, so we've returned this game gear to better than factory condition because the capacitors in it aren't terrible now. Um, let's just give it a quick test so it's a full recap you've taken what is uh could be a five to fifteen pound broken game gear and now it's worth 50 to 70 pounds depending on the way the wind's blowing when you uh, when you list it okay so the screen is as good as it's ever going to get um you know that is the game gear screen if you bought this in 1991 whenever it came out um You'd be like, oh, wow, that's amazing. It's the best thing ever. I think I had one back then. I did have one back then. That's why I love the Game Gear now. I have a huge Game Gear collection. It's the only collection I still have left. Um, so, yeah, this is the best stock Game Gear you can get now. Uh, could do with a clean-up and, and a new outer screen. But other than that, that's it. So how do we make this even better? Well, as you saw at the top of the video, there is the McWill screen. So that McWill is the username of the guy, Marco, uh, who designed this. Uh, he's based in Germany. Um, and what you get, you get a screen and you get a little bag of goodies. And in the bag of goodies are some sort of um, uh, links, like uh, jumpers and a uh, VGA port. And what the board does is actually provides the VGA out that so you can connect an external a monitor to your game gear some people also mod the game gear with uh you can put some controller pads in here so you break out the front buttons to a master system control pad and the game gear supports two two players there is actually a cable you can buy that goes into the external port here to a um to a nine pin joypad connector so you could actually connect two controllers to um to the game gear one person would play on the buttons and one person would play on the separate controller and so people have modded their game gears to have the uh, one and two player um, ports on the bottom and the VGA and then that basically turns your game gear into a master system so with the master system converter you know that that fits on the back you can uh, connect your game gear up to a TV and you can play it as if it was a master system um, and you probably also connect something to the audio out there um, 
So yeah, it's a great mod. I'm thinking of doing one at some point, but um, right now money's a bit tight, so I can't really afford to buy a Mookwell screen if I'm not doing it for a customer. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something I want to look at, um, like the ultimate uh, Game Gear. This, they're pretty cool. Uh, so let's turn this bad boy off. Right, in order to install your McWill screen, you require some, some instructions. Now the instructions are different depending on if you have the two ASIC like version one board, and this one shows a picture with two ASICs on it, or you have the single ASIC later revision board. Um, so I know this one's a two ASIC because we already opened it and recapped it. So we have the right, right instructions. I will put a link in the description to the instructions if you want to read them, um, but uh, they're pretty simple to follow. You just need to do a few things before you get started. Uh, and I do advise if you're going to do this, you read the instructions through once, because from what I remember, they're not that um, they're not that good. <laughs> like they jump around and stuff. You need to read ahead. Okay, so let's open up our game gear. Take our game out. All right, well, disconnect the power and sound boards. We don't need the back half of the game gear at all. We'll put that to one side. Uh, so the, what we're going to do is remove several um, components. Uh, so we're basically disconnecting the high voltage. So on the power board, there's one line of 38 volts, and that's what powers up the, the CFL tube. Now, we don't need that CFL tube anymore. We don't need any of these bits. Um, so we'll be taking all that out. Uh, what I'm going to do is just unscrew my Game Gear main board from the board. Okay, so we don't need the uh, front shell anymore. So again, we'll put that to one side. What we can do now is remove the uh, backlight parts that we don't need anymore. And that'll give us some spare screws as well. Go into my screw collection kind of reflector for the backlight so that just comes out and again we don't need this anymore but now what we're going to do is we're going to peel off the LCD from from the ribbon it's just held on with some glue so all I've done there is slice through this black tape that then kind of releases the, the screen and we can just go like like that now this is a fully working Game Gear screen. It's perfectly functional. But getting this ribbon cable back onto that connector is going to be next to impossible. Um, it looks like it's soldered on in some way or kind of some kind of conductive glue. So if we read the instructions, there's several components that we now need to remove, or we could have removed those first. Um, and basically that disconnects the high uh, voltage from um, from the uh, game gear so it's no longer used and the bonus of excuse me the bonus of that is you save massively on on the uh, battery usage the, the life the life goes up you know three i'd say three times it's three times better Okay, so if you read the instructions, it says uh, remove uh, nine resistors, remove some coils, remove some transistors, remove some capacitors, take off the LCD, which we did first, just because I don't like it flapping around. Uh, there's a plastic screw mounting post on the front of the case that needs to come off, and then the um, CFL tube and all that stuff. So it doesn't really matter what order you do that in, but I'm going to remove the bulkiest components first. So we'll take the, uh, we'll take the tube off first. I have seen people try to sell these as spares on eBay, but it's like, if I was going to replace, if my tube failed, um, I would not replace like for like, I'd replace that with an LED. Sorry about the noise, got the window open. Uh, handheld Hero Make um, uh, LED panels for Game Gears. So remove the, remove the uh, CFL tube, that's now gone. We'll remove the two fuses there either side of it. Uh, okay, other things. Right, we need to remove C33, which is a, a ceramic cap and the coil next to it. I've got the song from Batman in my head. I need to get a different test game. I don't know, what would you recommend? What's cheap? Like G-Lock. G-Lock is the cheapest game, really. Or Leaderboard Golf, which is tedious.
If you buy any Game Gear game bundles, they're always G locks or leaderboards in there. See, what I might do, as I'm struggling here, is get my PCB holder. Just should have gone first. It's pretty much perfect for the Game Gear. There we go. Bridge some of the pads there. Let's just undo that bridge. Because I, I think that's shortened ground to high voltage. Mm, Q2 is already missing. I think I remember that from last time. Q6, Q2, Q3, and Q4 all gone. LCD is gone. Uh, the fuses have gone. So now we have to do all the tiny little service mount resistors. So 33. Okay, just double check that, uh, R33, and that is mostly that. The next step is to actually uh, slide our McWell screen into our Game Gear. So if you, look at the, if you look at the McWell, it has four registration points on each corner, and those correspond to the screw holes that were holding on the, the uh, reflector. So if you look at the instructions, it basically tells you what to do, but it's you've got to get the uh, Game Gear board between the screen and the um, the McWill board, like a little sandwich. So last time I did this, the, it wasn't quite right. This, the mounting between the screen and the uh, board wasn't quite right. Now you just need to position it correctly. If you don't get the positioning right, what will happen is your screen will not be correct inside your game gear and you'll be forever looking like trying to peer under the, uh, the front of the screen to see the top of it. Yeah, this bit is just a little bit fiddly. It's, it's very, it is important that you get it, you get it as, as good as possible. The bottom of the, the sort of PCB here, you can see if the screen is straight with respect to that. So that's what I'm gonna go by. We're gonna get it, get it as close as possible. Oh yeah, don't remove the screen protector. There's a screen protector on the door. Don't remove that at any point uh, until you're ready to do the final install. So now we've positioned the screen and I've measured it. I'm quite happy where it is. Uh, the next step is to fix it in place. And that is achieved by just blobbing some solder. Grounding pads on the um, the well screen and on the Game Gear mainboard, and we just blob some solder until it flows and causes a junction. What well, you might want to do, and what I'm thinking of doing, because it just doesn't want to flow the last few thousands of a millimeter. We'll just put a bit of wire in there just to create a bridge between the well board and the Game Gear board. There we go. And I remember that from the first time I did this, it's a bit suboptimal. Okay, so that is our screen installed and held in place with the solder blobs as, as per the instructions. What we now need to do is connect the wires up. To do that, I'm gonna use some of this uh, thin gauge green wire. This is doesn't say what gauge it is, which is annoying, but there you are. So, <coughs> We just need to read through the instructions and connect the wires. There are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six wires that need to go on the edge connector down here, along here. Then there are one, two, three, four wires that need to go to the um, cartridge connector. And then there's some other positions on the board where we need to put some wires as well. It's relatively straightforward process, so let's just crack on with that. What I'm gonna do is do the wires on the front of it first. Because I'm soldering um, and the screen's right here, there is a danger of splashes, and if you splash even with the protector in the way, you're gonna cause uh, upsets and tears to what is a hundred you know, local currency unit uh, device. So uh, the Game Gear SMS selector is there. Ooh, I got a message. The message is, put your laptop on mute. You know, if there's anyone out there who's like a multi-millionaire approaching a billionaire and you want to send me some money so I don't have to live 
work in this tiny office with the noises and everything you know and I could get a nice big office maybe even open a video game museum how would that sound Okay, so that's the three buttons done. That's the C sync done. That's the voltage, um, five volts and ground done. That's the uh, clock done. Uh, this bridge, uh, C sync already mentioned that. So the only thing left are the data lines now from the from the board, and they go from down here uh, to up here. So probably going to route some under the flat flex cable and then some the other way. is uh, the untidied up uh, mod you can see the wires down here and they go to that side of the board what I'm going to do is just lay these flat once I've tested it and blob a bit of glue left and right here so, so it holds the wires down and you know if I was uh, if I was more practiced in this if I'd done more than the, this is only this no this is the third install I've done of one of these um, then you know I'd probably have a better technique so what do we need to do okay yeah we need to remove this post here you see this post in the middle on the front there that needs to come out and that's as easy as just cutting it off with a with a pair of pair of wire cutters then we're just going to position the board in the top case okay there we are If I'm honest, I think the screen is too far to the uh, to the this side. Is that left? But I mean, if you just you know put your mind back to how it looks, um, you know, before I replace the screen, I mean, like that's a million times better. So all we need to do is tidy up the wires. I think I'm going to see if I can reposition the screen by just removing the solder we added and just pushing it over a little bit. See if the mode selection works. Yeah, there we go. So you just hold down the three, the three buttons, and it suckles you some modes. It's such a more pleasant playing experience that it even makes Batman Returns playable to me. You know, not that Batman Returns is that bad of a game, but I, it's my test game, so I'm seeing it all the time. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to do some finishing off bits and uh, I'll come back and show you the whole thing. Okay, there's, I did a little tidy up inside here so the wires run left and right as we got them and there's a bit of hot glue holding holding them into position just so they don't flow around inside the case. Uh, I've moved the screen probably about a millimetre 
uh, one direction and uh, that's so because it was fouling on this post there's a post here under this screw and the edge of the screen was fouling on it it's just making everything a bit too tight for my liking so I moved that uh, I so I had to desolder the two solder kind of supports that uh, it says to use and I realized what would be better is just to run a bit of wire either side to kind of act as something to flow the solder on rather than just trying to blob a whole massive load of solder so that is uh, that is pretty much that installed um, other than that I think we just need to put it together give it a bit of a clean oh yeah we, I've forgotten one bit so um, in order to get the screen to fit uh, most of the shielding needs to be removed uh, so all the upper tines here that stick out have to come off and that's in the instructions as well this is one of these jobs with the right tool this is this is a job that would take seconds and with the wrong tools it takes five minutes right <coughs> done okay so install our shield back in just check it doesn't look ter as that terrible if you've got any jaggies just flatten them out okay There we go, there is our, uh, that was a Game Gear recap. Then a McWill screen mod installation. Let's just turn it on, make sure it's still working. I cannot recommend the McWill mod highly enough. Um, it just looks fantastic um, compared to the original Game Gear screen or really any other uh, handheld, you know, say predating the, um, the DS or the PSP, anything before that, uh, this looks better. Um, yeah, really easy to to uh, use. Not so easy to install. I'd say a medium difficulty. Um, uh, let's just change the mode here. Let's see what... Yeah, I think that's that's like a one to one mode. original size with scan lines okay so uh, yeah I think the customer is going to be super happy with this there's only uh, two more things to do and I'm not going to show them in this video but that is to replace this plastic with uh, this is the plastic uh, rounded one you can see see the curve here you can see it's rounded the uh, later model game gears have a glass flat one and I've ordered the glass flat one because it's uh, it's more scratch resistant and it looks actually looks better the the plastic one kind of looks a bit dull uh, doesn't show off the screen the best uh, the other thing to do is behind the cartridge here is uh, is that hole that isn't used anymore for security bit and uh, cover that with a little gold sticker so it looks super cool and that is pretty much that So, if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, 16 Bench. Uh, if you want a McWill done, uh, I have a listing on eBay for them. Um, it's not cheap. <laughs> like I said, the screen alone costs £100, so you can imagine uh, it's, it's more than that. Um, I'm not saying the price because I might change it. So, thanks for dropping by. I hope this video was useful, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>